these are the colours that I have chosen for my striped felted bag. There is a number of options that you have available in the different packs, um, lots of different colours available. It's up to you which suits you the most. But the best thing to do, first of all, is to look at the two colours that you've selected and to think which colour do you want to have on the base of your bag. Because that's obviously going to be the bit that's put down the most and it will get the grubbiest. So that's the one to think about which colour is going to be able to take that the most. And for me, I'm thinking this one. So this is the one. So this will be my colour that goes on the base. So this is colour A, this is the one that's going on the base of my bag. So for now, I'm just going to put the other one out of the way because this is the one that I need to focus on. OK, so the first thing I need to do is to remove the, the paper that's around it. It's really useful to keep one of these wrappers because they've got all the washing instructions. And this is particularly important with this type of wool. You'll need that for later. So I'm just going to put that to one side for now. OK. So this is a lovely wool. It is pure wool. Um, it's what is going to help us later on when we wash it and we felt it. Basically, felting means that you are shrinking the item that you've made um, just by a small amount, not not by a large amount. Don't worry, you're not just going to have a little purse at the end of it. Um, so it will shrink when you wash at a higher temperature. That's what natural wool does. That's why we've got to be really careful when we wash our own um, knitwear. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the end. And the end is virtually always tucked in to one of the ends of the, of the wool. So I've found the end of it. Now, if I'm going to cast on 10 stitches... I need a tail which is going to allow me to cast on 10 stitches. And it's not that long a tail. I don't need a very long tail. So I would suggest that if you had about 40 centimetres of tail, then that's going to be plenty. And I'll explain what that means. OK, so don't worry. 40 centimetres of tail. So the first thing that you do when you cast on is you need to make a loop. So you make a loop by putting the wool around your index finger on your left or your right hand, depending on on what you know is your dominant hand. So you put a loop around there and then you pull that loop off and push a piece of wool through the loop like so. I'm going to show you how to do that again. Make a loop around your finger and you push the wool through the loop like so. So you end up like with a bit of a slip knot on it. See, just like this. So I have stitch number one on my on my needle, on one end of the circular needle. To make stitch number two, I put the tail of wool around my index finger again and twist it so I have a loop again. You watch, put my finger underneath, hold on to the wool with the rest of my fingers, turn my hand around and then you've got a, a crossover with the piece of tail of wool. If you see there you can see it crosses over. I put the needle through the loop, keep my finger in that loop still so you've got the needle and the finger in the loop. Then you take the wool that's in your right hand, put it around the needle and then take the loop over the end of the needle and pull it gently, just like we did with the first one. Okay, and I'm going to show you some more of these. So again, I put my finger under the wool, I make a loop, I twist my finger around, put the needle through the loop. So I've got my needle and my finger through the loop. I take the wool in my right hand, put it just around the needle. And then with my finger, I pull that first loop just over the end of the needle and pull it gently, not too tight. If you look, my, my, my stitches can move up and down the needle. They're not making a squeaky noise. If they're making a squeaky noise, you know you've pulled the tension too tight or they won't move at all. 
Or the other side of it is if they're really floppy on the needle, then you know you haven't pulled it quite tight enough. So do that again. So I've got one, two, three stitches. So finger under the wool in the tail, twist my finger around, needle through the loop, put the wool in my right hand around the needle, pull the loop over the end of the needle, and I have four stitches. So I'm going to carry on now, finger under the wool, twist it around, needle through, wool in my right hand around the needle only, and pull it just so it's gently so and then I've got to do 10 stitches I will carry on until I've got 10 stitches done one three four five six seven push it up a little bit so it doesn't fall off the end eight nine and 10. Always double check. This is the time to double check how many stitches you've got. Because if you start knitting now and you haven't got the right number of stitches, it will all go very wrong. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've cast on my 10 stitches. But that is what casting on 10 stitches is like. This end I've got quite a bit a little bit of wool left not a lot but a little bit so what I usually do to keep it out of the way so I don't muddle it up with this end the one that's attached to the ball that's the one I'm going to be knitting with now so as I don't muddle it up I just fold it in half fold it in half again and then very gently make a loose a very loose knot with the end of it by pushing it through so that it's tidy it's out of the way and but it's really useful because I'll be able to use that later on for sewing up the bag. So there you go. It's all there nice and neat and I've cast on my tin stitches. Okay, so we've cast on our tin stitches. What we're doing just now. So we're actually going to start knitting. So we're going to start knitting. This is a circular needle. Usually you you're, as it says, you're knitting in a circular circle with a circular needle, but you can use them just like ordinary needles. It'll save you from buying an extra pair of knitting needles. So what you can do with these circular needles now is I move it from my right hand into my left hand. And then just move that ball out of the way a little bit. Then I pick up the other needle in my my right hand let's get it untangled from the wall and what it says in this pattern is you knit these 10 stitches in a stockinette stitch a stockinette is it's the most basic of stitches it's purl one row and then knit the next and then purl one row and knit the next and purl one row and knit the next so it's a really easy way to work to do the mo two most basic stitches. And once you've learned these, you can do virtually any type of stitch. So in order to purl, what you do is you put the needle, which has got nothing on. You put the tip of it through the first stitch. So you put it through the first stitch. You get hold of the wool underneath. So make sure it's the bit of wool that's attached to the ball. And you put it around the top of the needle that's just gone through that first stitch. So you put it through the top and you sort of pulling it gently with your right hand, not too tightly, just gently. But if you don't hold on to it at all, there's a good chance that it will fall off when you're trying to do the next move. So you do need to keep hold of it and pull it gently. Then what you do is you pull the tip of the needle backwards through. So you're going back and up at the same time. Because you go back and up, you've got a new stitch on this needle. So I'm going to show you that again. You push it through the first stitch on the needle. You take the wool around the top of that needle, pulling it gently 
with your thumb and forefinger. What I'm doing is resting my thumb on my forefinger and I'm holding it there. Not too tightly again. I don't want to make this too tight, but we're firm enough so it doesn't slip off the end of the needle. Then I pull the tip of that needle back through the first stitch and put up at the same time, pulling it back and up. And then very gently help with my fingers and push that first stitch off of the end of the needle. And there I've actually started to do my first purl row. And again, I push it through the second stitch. The needle goes through. I take this around the top and the back of the needle. I pull the needle back and up and then slip that second stitch off. And again, I push the needle through. So I'm coming to the front of the needle. Come, this is what pearl is. Pearl comes to the front of the knitting needle, the one with the stitches on. And then in a minute, knit will go to the back and you'll, you'll see the difference. So I've got the wool at the front. So the wool goes around, up, around the back of that needle. I pull the needle back gently and up, and slip that needle, that stitch off the needle. And I carry on until I've done the whole row. So through the stitch, around, back and up. Through the stitch, around, back and up. Through the stitch, around, back and up, till I get to the end of the row. And then I've done a row of pearl knitting. And now what I do is I just pull my knitting straight at the end. I can have a good old look at it, make sure it looks neat. Let's push it onto the needle properly so none of the stitches fall off the end. I want to double check now. I can double check that I've actually got the right number of stitches again. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I haven't dropped any. I've got my ten stitches and I've finished my first row in pearl. So to do a row and knit, I just again swap this needle with the knitting on over into my left hand, pick up the spare needle with my right hand. Again, let's untangle it from the wall. It's got tangled up again. Right, this time, last time we were pulling it through to the front. Okay, through to the front like that. That's for power. For knit, we go rather than through the front of the stitch, we go upwards like this and go to the back of the stitch. Can you see the difference? Frontwards for pearl to the front of the stitch and for knit we go up the stitch and around the back. So again I'm holding the wool to the ball of wool in my right hand. I go around the needle and this time you pull it down and through. Again I start second stitch, I go up like this, up through the stitch, I take the wool around the back of the needle and this time I pull the needle down and through. And then number three stitch, I take it around the back of the needle, I pull it down and through. I put the needle up, around the back of the needle, pull the needle down and through, and I slip the stitch off of the first needle. Again, around the back of the needle, down and through, off. The back of the needle, down and through, and off. Back of the needle, down, through, and off. Round, down and off, push it up, round, down and off, push it up, around, down and off. So again, 
again for my knitting straight. You see how easy it is my stitches slide? But if I held my needle upside down, they wouldn't all just slide off. So that helps you to know you've got the correct tension. And then if you look at it, you've got little lots of little loops and they're all interconnected with each other. And that's that is how you do stockingette stitch one row pearl one row knit so my next row is going to be pearl yes got right i turn it around again and i'm going to do a pearl row i carry on i carry on with my stockingette stitch until i've done 54 rows in total so we've done two we've done two together so the next row is row is pearl then the next row is knit carry on until you've done 54. So I've come to the end of my knitting. I've made, knitted my 52 rows that I needed to knit and all ready to finish the base of my bag. Now don't worry about it. They always curl up. Whenever you're doing stockinette stitch, it always curls up like this. It's when it's put together that you will, when you're sewing it into the base of the bag, that it will all come a lot better. So don't worry that it's all curled up like this. It always happens. And by the way, if you can hear some noise while I'm doing this, I've got my two cats sat beside me. One of them's giving herself a good wash at the moment. And the other one is just fast asleep. I'll turn the camera so that you can see them. There they are, sat on their cushion, enjoying themselves there. So, back to knitting. So, this is, I'm going to show you how to cast off. So, I'm on a purl row, so I will be casting off with a purl stitch. So, what I do is I knit two stitches, just like I was going to knit a purl row. So I've knitted, so I put my needle in, down through the stitch. I put my yarn around the back and then I push back and up. I've got one stitch, I do exactly the same, down through the stitch, yarn around the back, down and up. So I've got two stitches. Now when you cast off, it's really easy, it's nothing tricky at all this one. What I do is I've got two stitches. I put my needle with all the stitches on. Through the first loop, I pull it over the top of the second loop and just pull it off the end of the needle. There's one, so I'm only left with one stitch there. I'll do it again. I knit another stitch with the pearl down through the stitch, yarn around, pull it down and back up. And again, use this needle. It's not always easy to get it through the bottom of the stitch. Might need to give it a hand. There you go. And put my needle through that stitch. Pull it up so it's got a bit of a space. Go over the top of the next stitch. And look, you see, I'm starting to create the end there. Go the next one down. Around the end, the needle, put it back up. I've got two stitches. I pull the first one over the top of the second, and I keep on down, back up. Pull the first one. See, it's not always easy, is it? Over the second. I'll admit, knitting can be tricky at times, but don't get stressed about it. Just enjoy. Enjoy it, enjoy making something, something that's going to be useful. This is going to be a beautiful bag at the end of it. At the end, around, only 10 stitches to cast off. At the end, down, around, over the top, down, around, back up. Top down around, look, it's the last one. 
I haven't got any left on here now, all empty. I'll do the last one, push that needle through. It's going to be tricky now, isn't it? Last one, poison. And there you are. So I've cast off. I've got one stitch left on there now. The last thing when you've cast off, you've got your one stitch left. Just find yourself a pair of scissors. Cut the wool to the ball. So I've got a little end, probably about 15 centimetres long. Little end. And what I do with that end is I pull this stitch to make this stitch bigger. It just makes life easier. And that end, I'm going to take that needle out. I just push that end through the loop. Doesn't really make any difference which way through it goes. And just pull it tighter. And there you go, I've got my cast off end. There's my piece of knitting. Okay. Now this is going to be the the right side of it. This is going to be the outside. Okay. And it shows like that. And this is going to be the inside. And so I've got the base of my bag. Well done. You've got that far. If you've got that far, you now know how to cast on, you know how to knit, you know how to purl. You might need to know how to pick up stitches if you've already had to drop stitch and you've had to pick one up. And you've learned how to cast off at the end. So brilliant work. You're knitting and you've actually got quite a lot of skills there already. Okay, so we've cast off our base of our bag. So we're going to swap over to the next colour. We're going to go into colour B for the main part of the bag. So the stripe which goes around the bottom of the bag. So first thing I'm going to do is move this out of the way. I don't need that wool and I don't need the base of the bag at the moment. I put it to one side. I'll bring in my other colour. And just like before, I take off the wrapper. Put it to one side and I find the end of the wool. Again, it's tucked in usually, it looks like it, tucked in to the end of the wool. So I found the tail of the wool and what I've done now is I've measured out 180 centimetres of wool. I've measured it out, so I've got 180 centimetres. I've got a long tail this time. This time I'm casting on 104 stitches. Remember last time it was only 10. To cast on 104, we're going to need a long tail because actually our first stitches, the first 104 stitches are made from this tail. So I've got 180, measured it out, got my fingers in the right place. So this is where my first stitch is going to be, remember? Do the twist around my finger put, so that the two ends cross over, put it off my finger, push the wool through and pull the two ends to make a loop. Okay, so this loop is going to be the start of our circular knitting. We are going to be knitting in a circular way. Do not worry about it. It's much easier. I think it's much easier than knitting, going backwards and forwards, knit and purl, knit and purl, because all you'll be doing is knit stitch. From now on, you are only doing knit stitch. You don't need to worry about purl stitches at all. So I've got my first loop, I've got my needle in my other hand, put the loop on the needle, pull it tight, tightish, not too tight, a little bit tight. On my needle again, still can slip up and down very easily. But it's not going to hold it, hold it up. Fingers crossed, it won't fall off the end. No, it doesn't. That's all right then. So now I need to cast on 104. I've got one. So the next one. Loop around my finger, twist my finger around. Needle through the loop. The thread from the ball of wool. There, still in my hand goes around so it's the tail it's the tail end that I'm twisting around my finger the one that goes to the ball of wool is in my other hand my right hand for you it might be your left hand if you're left-handed so twist around my finger needle through the loop ball of wool 
yarn around the end of the needle and pull the loop off the end just like we did with the other colour. Okay, so two stitches. One, two. Here goes another one. Three. Four. And so on. I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Okay, because once we've got about 20 stitches happening here, something interesting will happen. Okay, so let's get a few stitches on and then I'll come back. Come back a little early because as I was thinking about it, I've got 10 stitches on. What I'm doing as I'm knitting these 10 stitches is I'm pushing them a little down the, th the needle. I don't want them right on the end. They'll fall off if they're right on the end. So keep pushing them on. So 10, 11, 12. 13, push it on a bit, 14, 15, 16, push it on a bit, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right, see, look, it's starting to get towards the end of this needle. Oh no, what's going to happen? <laughs> got 20 on here at the moment. Let's do a few more. 21, 22, 23, 24. Try that. And look, first stitch falling off the end is going on to the piece of plastic that's what circular knitting is all about okay because you are going to knit all the way around the bag all the way around going around and around and around and these amazing needles help you to do this so let me double check i think it was 24 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. So keep going. So I've got 24. I've got another 80 to go. So I'll cast on my next 80 stitches. And don't worry, they are supposed to be going back onto this piece. And they won't fall off the end. Because the other needle, I can't find it, on the other end, it's they won't go up onto that needle because it's thicker than the plastic that they're on. And it'll start at like an automatic stop. Okay, so don't worry. So 104, off you go. So when you think you've cast on your 104 stitches and you have been counting, so you're fairly sure that you've cast on 104 stitches, before you do anything else, you need to check that you have 104 stitches. So if you start knitting now, and you've either got 110 or 92 your bag is either going to be too big and you won't have enough wool to knit that larger bag or too small and the bottom won't fit okay so the first thing you do is start to count what i always do is i count in tens and i keep my because i always lose count always always so i start counting so i start at the beginning one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then i move my other fingers along 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 and i move my fingers along so that i'm constantly know that i've got at least some part of it already counted so you need to 100 percent check you've got 104 stitches on here I've counted things like knitting so many times before and every time I count, I've got a different number. So you've just got to keep checking, I'm afraid, until you've got, you know, you know you've really got that number on there. So again, you should have a tail left at the end of it. You won't have got quite to the end of that wool. If for whatever reason you find that you haven't got enough wool in your tail, it means that you're either your stitches here are going on far too loose or you've got too many. OK, so I mean, I've got about 20 centimetres of wool left over. 
it just plenty. You don't want any more than that really left over. If you have not got enough wool, the only thing you can do is to pull all those stitches off of your needles and start again, I'm afraid. Only thing you can do. And if you need a little bit of longer tail, allow yourself more yarn, but you shouldn't. These needles, it's the size of the needles which set the size of the stitches. And so long as you haven't got your stitches too loose, again, they would be falling off, but mine don't fall off. Once they're on the main part of the needle, they don't slip off. Um, if yours are slipping off, it might be that your, your knitting is too loose. Okay, so with this bit of a tail that I've got left over, like last time, I'm just going to fold it and get it out of the way. I'm, I've only got space to fold this once this time. Fold it once, make a little knot through, just do it loosely because you can use this for sewing up at the end. Just, just do it loosely and then you know that you don't knit with that piece. That's the tail end. So before I start knitting, what I need to do now is to avoid a problem later on is make sure that this ridge this ridge of stitches here isn't twisted around the knitting needle or along the, the plastic that joins the two knitting needles so i just run my fingers along it keep running them along it to make sure this ridge is always at the top of the needle look, look, look it's twisted around let's pull it back up make sure it's twist not twisted around the needle always at the top okay now now i've got to the other knitting needle at the other end what i'm going to do now is very gently i'm going to pull the stitches ease them up onto the needle ease them up to the top because this stitch here is going to be the first stitch that I knit into because this is going to be a circular piece of knitting. I'm going to knit in a circle. So this is where it joins. So let me get hold of the right piece of thread, the bit that goes to my ball. And just like just now when we were knitting, you do a knit stitch always the, the first stitch is always the hardest it's always 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 the hardest it's a bit tighter okay when you cast on your cast on stitches are always tighter than your ordinary knitting stitches so you push the needle up so you push it up in the stitch and they cross over your needles cross and then the stitch you're knitting with goes in behind and you take the yarn around the back between the two needles, you pull the right hand needle or left hand if you're left handed down and up. And what we've done is we've joined our circular knitting. OK, it's joined. Now, it's really important to know where you've joined your knitting, because if I'm going to say to you knit 22 rows or 20 rows, you're not going to know where that is if you don't know where you started. Now, at the moment, it's quite easy because you've got a. A lovely tail here but when you've knitted a few more rows it's going to be harder to see exactly which stitch that relates to so what i will have done for you is i will have put you in a stitch marker and i'll always try and do it in a contrast color to the colors you're knitting with so i'm knitting with a gray and a blue so i've got myself a red stitch marker and what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to push that through there like that and that's just going to show me where the beginning of this row is and when I get around to the stitch marker again I will move it up so all I'm going to do now is carry on knitting knit stitches it's all knit stitches so let's get that around the knit marker because the knit marker is uh, pulled into here let's just take my wool out of the knit marker because I don't want that hampering my knitting so in the knit next stitch around and off it is a little bit tighter when you're knitting as i said when you're just knitting cast on um the next rows will be so much easier okay so just do it slowly do it carefully so i've knitted two 
Here we go, the next one. So needle up, in behind, yarn around and off. What I need to keep doing is just pushing up on the needle, okay? So that needle, nearly lost that one. Needle up, yarn around the back, down between the two and over the top. Needle up, around the back, yarn around, needle down and up. Okay, and then I keep gently pushing the yarn off of here. Remember, it's going in a circle, so you've got to keep pushing the stitches around the circle. Push them up onto this needle. Okay, so I'm going all the way around until I come back to the red mark. You can see I'm nearly at the end of my first row um, because the red mark is coming up. So all the way around, I've been pushing down when I've got enough stitches on this side, push them off, pull them all the way around. Like it looks like a spring, doesn't it? It's like a bit of knitting in grey in particular. Pull them around. And then I get up to this needle, push them up. It is a bit tight pushing them on, I know, but don't worry, don't worry. And then do my last few stitches here. Knitting till I get around to that red marker. Row, row left, one, two. There's the tail from the last stitch that I made. Three. Now, when you're doing circular knitting, you always end up with something that looks like this, like a massive, like, oh my goodness me, something's gone totally wrong here. Don't worry, nothing's gone wrong. It's just because you've joined the two ends, you always end up with this. So it will it will disappear once we've knitted around a couple of times. So we've got here, let's plonk that down. Let's take the marker off. Right, the next stitch that I do, I know I've got to put the, the marker on that. So I'm going around. So I've done one row. I've done one row. If you need to do a tally beside you on a piece of paper or something, mark down the number of rows that you've done. You need to know your number of rows. Okay. So I've done one row. I've knitted one row. I'm carrying on knitting, not going to purling, I'm just carrying on knitting. So this is the first stitch of row two. So I've done my first stitch. Okay. You can see the bit of wool there. Up underneath. So between the last one and the first one, I'm just going to put on my stitch marker again. Push it on. There it is, in place. I haven't caught in my bit of wool this time. And then just keep on knitting, going around and around. And this time, it'll start to get easier because the stitches, you're not on your cast on row. You're on further on. So push them off, push them around, all the way around on the needle. Up onto the other one. And then keep going. Okay, if I want to stop at any time, remember what I said. Push it onto the needles, put that on the top. It's not going to go anywhere. So we're on the second row of 22 rounds. I'll see you again when we've knitted 22 rounds in this colour, in colour B, whatever your colour B is and I'll show you how to join in the new colour. Okay, so happy knitting, relax and enjoy it. So you've been knitting, you've managed to get 22 rows of beautiful, beautiful stockingette stitch. Don't worry about the rolling up like I said to you on the base piece it it will be fine at the end because we will be ironing it flat or blocking it as it's called um, with with damp with damp material so don't worry about that so 
I've done my 22, I've got my last four stitches to do, and then I'll show you then how to change the colour. Okay, so my last few stitches, let's get along to the stitch marker, and here it is. Here's the stitch marker, so I know that I've reached the end of that round. I'm just going to move my stitch marker again up to the next one, so I always know where the beginning of each round is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change colour. I'm going to change from this grey to my back to my blue again. So this is my colour B. I'm changing back to my colour A that I did my base with. So what I do is I just get a pair of scissors and cut. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little bit of a an end and I'll sew that in later. So just cut that one off. Okay, and then move my colour B to one side and bring back my colour A. Right, when you're knitting in the round, it's it's easier to change colours. It's much easier. So I'll show you. Okay, because quite often if you're if you're um knitting uh, backwards and forwards with two ordinary knitting needles you, you have some difficulty with looseness of stitches but when you're knitting in the round you don't so it's it's quite easy to change so all I do is I get ready to knit I find the end again I leave I'm going to leave about 10 centimeters of end so I've got plenty that I'm not I'm not sort of trying to fiddle around with it I just put it around like I would with the grey wool and then I start knitting now the the next stitch is going to be is always the the one which is a little bit tricky because if I just pull the end that's coming from the ball of wool you see what happens the end starts to pull through so let me pull that back so that it's not there so what I do normally is I just hold that with my other fingers underneath. You see, I'm just holding it there so that it won't pull through. And I just keep knitting and it's as simple as that. Now what I'll show, do is I'll show you in a moment when I've knitted a whole round, again in this colour, what to do when I get back to that grey end because if I just knit into that stitch, it's going to be a bit saggy. So I will show you what to do when I get there. Okay, so 16 rows in the blue, but I will show you what to do when we get, I get around. So I've got four stitches knit, finished to, to knit. And I have arrived back at the beginning of my row now. As I'm getting closer to that last stitch, I'll just show you what I'm going to do. Okay, because if I just start putting my needle in there, if you look, it, it starts to get enormous. So let's, I'm just going to hold a bit of grey tail, a bit like I did with the blue one earlier. I'm just holding that in behind with my fingers. Otherwise that stitch will look huge um, when my work is finished. So I'm just holding it with my fingers to keep it a little bit tighter knit into it just like you would ordinarily still looking a bit big I'm just pulling it a little bit just pull that tail a bit look again if it's if it's looking enormous like that it starts to look big and you see it looks bigger than the other stitches just pull the tail gently with your fingers it starts to look the same size as the next stitch and when you go on to this first blue one oh and if I got to move my um oh, okay right move my marker because I have I can't move my marker can I because I haven't joined that up. I'm gonna leave my stitch marker where it is you know silly me so when I move go over to knit the first stitch of the blue I'm gonna to have to do exactly the same I'm gonna to have to hold that blue thread between my fingers there stop it getting enormous Needle in, knit the first one, pull that a little bit again because that stitch is much to look too big. I'm going to keep hold of it while I knit the second one of the blue. And then I can just carry on now. 
Now, if I show you what the inside looks like after I've knitted a few stitches, so I've got the inside here. I've got two ends, a blue end and a grey end. And just don't worry about those. Don't worry about them. Just keep on knitting now. And later on, we'll sew those in. Now, it also looks like there's a bit of a hole here. If you see where my finger's poking through, and don't worry about that because when we sew the grey end in, we'll sew it over this way. When we sew the blue end in, we'll sew it over this way. And then amazingly, that hole disappears. Now, next time we move, get around to where the, the marker is, we're going to have to take it out from here and move it up a couple of rows because when we change colour, because those two aren't joined there's nothing to actually attach it to in there so when we get around to the stitch marker again it'll be coming up here okay onto the blue that I've just done so it's 16 rows of blue then you change colour back to well, 16 rows of colour A I should say because yours might not be blue so 16 rows of colour A then we change back to colour B and that'd be 22 rows of colour B and then 16 rows of colour A again. And then we'll have completed the main part of the bag. And I will show you how to start casting off the main part of the bag. Because it's a little bit different to the bottom. Okay, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Well, well done. Keep on going and you will see your knitting improve. And if you are in any trouble, I mean... You know, how many times have I ripped out all of my knitting and started again? I've lost count. So I have done it a number of times, particularly when you're learning. Just go back to the beginning, start again. Look at the videos. Don't worry. There's lots of things that you help here for you. OK, see you in a minute. Just before I allow you to get on and finish off knitting the main part of the body of the bag, I just wanted to show you when you've come to the end of knitting your blue. So I've knitted 16 rows of well, your colour A, I should say. Sorry, it's my blue, your colour A. I've knitted 16 rows of this. So I need to go on to do another uh, 22 rows of my colour B. But when I look at my colour B, that's what I've got left. Um, the size, oops, sorry, I've dropped it. The size ball that I started with was that. Now, if you think I've cut knitted twenty two rows, that is not going to be enough to knit another twenty two rows. Normally, I am very careful with my wool, and I would use that up next. But if you're starting out, you don't want more ends to um, sew in than you really need to. Um, and you might finish that ball halfway through knitting your 22 rows and you might need to start off with a, a second ball. So for now, I'm going to put that to one side. I will not just leave it. I will be reusing it. But for now, I would suggest you start your 22 rows for the next block with the second ball of wool. OK, it will just save you a lot of sewing in ends next. OK, so. I would just leave you to get on with it, but I wanted to say that before we went any further. Bye. I finished my last 16 rows in colour A. So now it's time to start thinking about the handles. So you can see what it looks like. Um, this is the main body of the bag. And now we're going to actually start thinking about the handles. And we knit these as part of... Of what we've already done so I'll show you that next okay so first thing I need to do is to knit 14 stitches one oh my I'm giving up the wall two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 
14. Right, so knit 14 stitches. And then what you need to do is slip the last eight of these onto a safety pin. So I'm really sorry, there's a horrible fly around here. If you can hear it, it's a big buzzy fly. So I'll give you a, a better safety pin than this. This is one of my children's old nappy pins, so a very long time ago. So I'm going to slip them off. I've just knitted them, so I'm going to slip off those eight. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Seven and eight. Right, and these eight stitches are going to make part of one of the handles. Okay, so put it on there. Close that one. And that's ready to do the first part of the handle, one of the handles. Okay, so the next job is to cast off 16 stitches. So just like when we were doing the base of the bag, 16 stitches. So knit the first one, the knit, knit the second one, then you slip that one over the top, one. Cast off one. Cast off two. Cast off three, cast off four, cast off five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, down fifteen. <laughs> And 16, so I've cast off 16 stitches. Okay, so I've still got one left on my needle. So what I do then is that it says knit eight. Now I've already knitted one, that one's there. Okay, so don't forget to count that one. So I'm gonna need another seven stitches. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So just like before, you're going to slip those onto a safety pin. Okay. Slip those those eight onto a safety pin. And then you follow the pattern. So it's cast off the next 20. So just like we cast off these 16, we cast off the next 20, then knit eight and put it on a safety pin, then cast off 16, knit eight uh, on a safety pin. And then I'll come back to you at the very end. Okay, at the last bit. I have got four lots of handle. On safety pins. I've given you safety pins. There are, you can buy um, knitting holders, so holders for holding your knitting, but when they cost about four pound each and we'd need four of them for this bag, it's, it's a silly amount of money to pay. Safety pins work just as well. Okay, so um, that's why we're using those, you know, £16 extra on a bag, that's too much. I wouldn't want you to have to pay that. 
So we've got our four lots of um, handles on on the safety pins. So I've just got my last 20 stitches now. So what I need to do is to cast all of these off, the last 20 cast off. And um, when I get to the last stitch, I'll come back and show you. So just like before, knit one, knit two, pass this one over the top, all the way along to the end of those 20. Last stitch on the needle, just like we've done before. Have a end of thread, cut it so it's about 10 centimeters long. And then push that end of thread through the last loop and just pull it gently. So it's tight. So I've still got that last stitch holder there. I'll take that one, not stitch holder, the um the marker where it's the start of the row that can come out now. Don't need that anymore. So what we have, let me have a minute. Is the main body of the bag and what will happen is we'll be knitting up the handles we'll knit half of this handle and the other half here and then we'll join them together at the top okay now we're ready to start doing the handles so the first thing I have to do is to take the um, stitches back off of the safety pin. So I'm do, going to work with one safety pin at a time. What I'm going to do, oh, that's the last thing I want to do is stop dropping stitches now. So I'm going to say the first thing I'm going to have to do is be very careful. This is the first thing I did was not be careful. So I need to start threading the stitches back onto the needle. So I'm going to do them one at a time. Let's remember there should be eight on each pin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Last two. Just push those on a bit so they don't fall off. Seven. Here's the last one. Let's put the pin out of the way. So I've got them, them all back on the needle. So I'll just give it a bit of a, a turn and make sure that they're the right size stitches. Just because when we were casting off, we might have pulled the, the um, yarn a bit here and um, it, it's made the last stitch a little bit tight. So this is the last direction we went in because we were going around all the way around here, knitting in this direction. So they would have ended up, remember we were on this way, we we were knitting like that and then we threaded the, the safety pin in. So the last direction we knitted in was this. So if we're going to carry on and stocking it, stuck in that stitch we're not going to be knitting in the round anymore we're not going to be doing any circular knitting so we're going to do like we did with the base so it's going to be knit a row purl a row knit a row purl a row so the last row we did was a knit row because we went in this direction so the next row we're going to do is a purl row so i need to find my yarn because i'm going to join this back on so if you probably need a little bit of a reminder how to do purl stitches because we've done just done knitting all the way that's why circular knitting is so easy when you're doing stockinettes it's just knit stitches the whole way so now we've got to remind ourselves how to do purl so when you're doing purl you put your needle down through the stitch with the needle you're putting in going in front of the one with the stitch on so let's find Make sure it's not all tangled, my wool. And the wool goes around the needle between the two needles and the needle pulls back and up and then comes off. Now remember you've got this tail and we'll sew that in later. That's where we've joined on the wool. I'm just gonna hold it with that thumb so it doesn't 
make that stitch too loose down around through the needle back and up down through the stitch around goes the yarn between the two needles and that needle goes down back and up so we've got three four five six seven eight and then turn I'm gonna knit back and knit backwards and needle behind again one we should be used to this stitch now you've done it all the way with the section of needles one two three four five six seven eight and don't forget that last stitch see it's got too big it's it's, it's got really big in comparison with the others so I just grab hold of the tail and pull it gently to make it a little bit smaller make it the same size as the others but don't worry we can sort it out properly when we finished off so just carrying on a stockinette stitch so the next row is going to be purl and you need to carry on until you've knitted 24 rows we've knitted two so we need 24 more we need 22 more rows here so we've knitted two rows so a purl and a knit we knit 22 more so 24 in total and then cast off we've just done lots of casting off you know how to cast off go back and look at the videos for the base if you want to look how to cast off again for how we or go back to how we did this casting off um, and so we need 24 rows of stockinette stitch on each part of the handle so this one that one there's another one another two over this side somewhere there's one there and one here somewhere yeah there so there'll be four long handle things in the end all cast off and then we'll look at how we sew them together and then we'll be sewing sewing the base on and we're just about there not quite but just about there well done the way we know which two handles go together to make a pair is by looking at this part of the bag. Now if we have a look here, it looks like these bits just aren't quite meeting up. There's a bit of a step there in the blue and the grey and again down here and again there you can see it just there, a bit of step. And that's the um, that's the part of the bag where we had the, um, the pin showing that we were moving on to a new row. Okay, so the the row marker, that's where that was. So that was where each new row began, just here. And this needs to be, it's just, just off the side of the bag. Okay, just off the side. So what we'll be sewing together is this handle. We'll go together with this one to make a round handle and the same on the other side. So what I'm going to show you now is how to do this. So I think the best way of doing this for you is, is to pin it with the safety pins that you've got in your pack. Um, so my cat has decided to have a meow while she's sitting, settling herself down. So here are the two other two handles now what I do is I don't I put them so the two knitted sides are facing together so you see the two knitted sides the ones that like they're the proper knitting those face together make sure that the corners are in line with each other on the handles just like this so the two corners are in line what I'm going to do now is put a pin 
in here to secure them. I'm not putting it right at the top because otherwise it's going to get in the way of me sewing. I'm just putting the pin there so that it holds them in place. Here's the pin. Here's the pieces that I've pinned together. And I've got two ends, one here, one here from the two cast offs. Now I think either of these is long enough to sew up the, this short bit of knitting. Okay, if, if it isn't, if you've cut them off short, it doesn't matter. You can start off with another, another piece of wool that you, you cut off the ball. But a key thing here is that when you are sewing this back together, because of the special uh, way that this, this wool is going to shrink in a moment in, and felt the bag, please only use this type of wool for sewing it together. If you don't use this type of wool, if you choose to use another wool, then you will end up with the, your sewing, the wool for your sewing not shrinking in the same way as the material for the bag, which, which would be a shame. So I'm looking at it. I think this piece is slightly longer than the other, so I'm going to use this for, for sewing my bag together. So what I'm going to do is put my yarn around the top of my needle, pinch it tight, pull it off. And that gives me quite a sharp piece of yarn for threading through the hole. So she, yes, it did go, that's fine. And the useful bit with using um, a piece of yarn where it, that you've cut off when you cast off is it's already attached. If it hadn't been attached, I'd have had to go one, two, three, sew it, sew it three times in the same place to say putting a knot in the end of it. I don't like knots in the end of all. They um, they make they make a, a, a big lump in the wool. So, see what I mean? I, I said we're just pinning it together to hold it in the same place because I need to get into the seam. So, when I sew wool together, seam it seems, I always use the the cast off. See these cast off stitches? They're going across rather than down. You see that one? It goes across rather than down, and I use these as the the bit that I sew into. Okay, it makes it look a lot tidier. So I'm going to start off right close to this edge. So I go up. I catch underneath the stitch so that it's basically I, I'm removing the bit of the stitch which might show and I'm going to go do the same over this side underneath and up and pull it oh, pull it tight there it is right once you've done the first one it's easy so come back over to this side Looking underneath, and I go under that stitch and up and over this side under the next stitch and up. It gives you a really tidy seam doing it this way. It makes it look like it's stitched. And you see, I'm, I'm putting my finger down the middle of that seam. Just pushing it open a bit so I can see my next one's going to go. Here's my next one here. Underneath and up. Look over this side. Underneath and up. As long as I'm doing it one stitch at a time, it's going to keep, going to keep it tidy. So that one's already been sewn into. Here we go. Underneath and up. And over this side. Underneath. Keep going all the way along. Underneath. Oh, no, I'm not wrong. No. These are um, special needles for sewing knitting. Let's pull that in because it's going to pull out my needle in a minute. They're slightly blunter. They, they, they haven't got a very sharp point on at all. You don't want them sort of going into, into the yarn. You don't want them splitting the wool. By going into individual bits, so 
they're quite blunt underneath and up underneath and up I'm nearly there now right at the end underneath and up underneath and up right so way of finishing off okay and it's looking not it hasn't quite met if you see what I mean there's a bit of a a dip here so I'm just gonna go through this one just to pull it together to say that the two sides look no there's no dip anymore and what I'm doing now is that remember I said if I hadn't if I hadn't um got a long enough yarn I'd start by doing one two three in the same place I, this is how I finish I do one two three in the same place one two rub I'm going to use that tail now two three in the same place and just to secure it just I know it's really secure when I start to pull this last one through I'm, I'm getting a bit short in my ball. I've got a loop there and I'm just going to go back through that loop. It just, it's, it fastens it off nicely. I'm trying desperately not to lose that loop through there. Right, so that's, that's a really tight, secure seam now. And then what I do with this last bit, I don't just cut it off. I just very gently throw my, thread my needle up and down, very gently back along the seam. Push it along and then pull the seam flat. Okay, so this tail I don't need it, so this tail I can cut off. Right, starting to look good that. Right, let's get rid of the safety pin now so I can look at it properly from the other side. Yeah, looking smart. Now I've got the other, the other end where I cast off the other, the other side of it, and I do that in exactly the same way. I don't need to sew the handle anymore, but what I do is to tuck the end of it away, thread it through the needle. I'm just literally going to push it through to the wrong side. I'm not for any other reason that I'm not doing a stitch. I'm just pushing it through to get it onto the other side. Now this is it's secure. It's you've tied up the end when you cast off. So literally, I'm just tucking it out of the way. So just go again, go along the seam, not going right the way through. I'm just taking a little nibble at the stitches, pull it through, pull the seam straight. And then, then just cut the end bit off. And what I've done now is I've sewn that handle together. Sewn the handle together. And that's what my, my seam looks like. And I've also sewn in those two ends. So what you need to do is you need to do exactly the same to the other handle on the other side of the bag. So the other two which are left here, I do exactly the same. So placing the knitting stitches together to start with, line up the corners, pin in. Some of these long enough, these both look long enough to sew, sew across, sew across. If it's not long enough, I cut another piece of wool from the ball and use that instead. And then sew in the ends. I've shown you how to sew in the ends here. What I'll do next is I'll show you how to sew in the ends for the colours that we used on the stripes. Okay, I'll do those next. We now have our handle sewn together. These are two separate ones, so two handles sewn together. So before we sew on the bottom of the bag, what we need to do is we need to get rid of some of these ends um, around the top. And 
inside the bag as well so things like this just to tidy it up so that we've got a very neat tidy bag when we've when we've got it finished i'll show you how to do one of the ones around the top and one of the ones inside because they're actually very similar to what i've just shown you but there's just a little bit more of a technique depending on where where the end is okay it's just it'll make your bag look that, that just a little bit more professional and tidy if we do it in a particular way i threaded my needle through one of the pieces of um cast off yarn at the top just to show you how to do the ones here because if you have a little look at the one that i've i've got and the one which is right beside it the one that's right beside it is a probably even better example but what happens is when you when you cast off and you carry on knitting there's just a little bit of a almost a little bit of a gap between where that piece of yarn is coming out of the handle and the cast off edge here I think what I will do in order just to make that look a little bit tidy again you see you've got a, a stitch which is going across you go into the bottom of that stitch and just catch that one and pull it together it just makes it look just a little bit more part of the handle it just leads into it a little bit better and if we go back into one of the stitches i'm not putting the needle all the way through to the front i'm actually just dealing with the back so i've, I've just pulled that bit just into it a little bit more and then with the cast off edge what i would suggest on the handle just because if you go across here you will have a line of stitching which is just a little bit obvious if i if i show you that so i'd go through the stitches here I was doing this one, two, but if you see it's starting to create a line already, which I, I don't like having that showing if it's something which is going to be, it's not totally on show is it the inside of a shopping bag, but I know it's there. So to hide it a little bit more, I'm just, sorry, I'm just pulling out the stitches that I've just made, and this one doesn't want to come out. Come on, awkward one. No, it's not going to come out. There you go. So be it. I'm being too much of a perfectionist. What I suggest you do, and what I'm going to do for the rest of the sewing on these around the top, is take the thread at the side of the handle. Nobody is going to see this at all. So if we do it gently, so just one stitch at a time. Oh, you don't have to do the whole length of this thread. So we'll cut some of it off. It's literally just to tuck it away. Is every other stitch. And just taking it in behind and tucking it out of the way. That's probably enough. I don't need to go any further than that. Pull that out. Cut that end off. Literally all we're doing is tidying this up. So there's that, that end gone from there now. And I've threaded it up the back on the edge of that handle. And once we've felted this wool, that will all tighten up. And you won't see that at all. I'll just show you what to do for tidying up the ends inside. Okay, so do you remember when we were changed colour right, right back at the beginning when we started knitting this bag? And I said, oh, there's a bit of a hole, but we can sort that out when we tidy up the ends. So let's start with the grey. Thread that onto my needle. And what I'm going to do with the grey, if I take the grey over in this direction when I'm sewing it in and I take the blue in that direction, that automatically closes that hole. So I'm going to take the grey over here and do you see, I can see a line of blue stitches. What I'm going to do with this grey, I'm going to go through, let's pull it 
my needle bit. I'm going to pull it through every one of those blue stitches. Just it's not going through to the front at all. I'm just going through the stitches on the back. So it disguises those blue stitches a little bit with my grey going through them. I think I've probably done enough there. Is it straight away? That hole has uh, it's gone already. Don't even need to do the blue bit, but I do because I've got to tidy up that end. That bit. And then when I do the blue, how am I going to sew that then? Well, I'm sewing it in the opposite direction. So in the opposite direction, so it makes sure that, that hole is well and truly closed, but I can't see it hardly at all. And this time I'm going to sew it through every grey stitch that I can see on this side. See, I'm working on the wrong side of the knitting, it's working on the inside the bag, so up through every grey stitch. One more. The end off. Done. Okay, that's the next ones up that I need to do. So I'll be doing those next. So keep going, tidy up all the ends around the top of the bag, tidy up all the ends in the inside of the bag, and then we'll be ready to sew the bottom of the bag on and we'll have finished the whole knitting and sewing part of it. Well done. So everything's sewn up on the outside and on the inside as well. It's looking tidy. Now before we sew the base on, there's our base. Remember we made that a long time ago now. What we need to do is we need to turn the whole thing inside out. Oh, sorry. The whole thing needs to go inside out because when you, you know if you do sewing, when you're sewing things together, it's best if the right sides are facing each other. You can have a much tidier seam. So just like we did with the handles at the top, we had the right sides facing each other. So the next thing is, don't worry about your base. Move that out of the way. Move this one, turn it inside out. There's my bag turned inside out. What I need to do now, what you need to do as well, is make sure that the handles are absolutely even at the top. Make sure they're even right on top of each other. Smooth out the bag. So all the way down then, working your way down the bag. Smooth it out. See if you can unroll this bottom because we're going to need that unrolled as much as we can. It will keep on rolling up until we've got the bottom sewn in place. But if we can keep it everything as flat as possible, it just help us to pin this bottom in place. Okay, so we can see it's inside out. Because what you see is what this is called is moss stitch. As that is stocking it stitch on the inside, you've got moss stitch on the inside where it's, everything is purled. You can see the moss stitch, you can see where the two colours combine. It's on the inside of the bag, so that doesn't matter. Some people really like it. I actually I really like that. It looks like um you've gone along with hand stitching along here. So if you prefer it this way, you can have it this way, but you'd need to have tidied up your ends. Yeah, I can see a bit of a one of my ends is just poking up a little bit there. You'd need to have tidied up your ends on the other side of the bag. So we're going to have the stocking it stitch on the outside for now. We're working on the inside to sew in the base of the back. So here's my base. So it's going to go along here. Now it looks slightly short. If you look at it, I'll lay it on top. 
it looks a little bit short but don't forget what you've got is you've got these it's not just all about the length of the bag it's the fact that you've got space here at the side as well and the base will so into here. So what you need to do, whether it's by eye or whether it is by measurement, you can get out your, your measuring tape if you would prefer to be 100% accurate. I do tend to do things by eye and I'm laying this on here and I'm thinking this is looking like the little bit of knitting this end and the little bit of knitting this end are more or less equal because what I'm going to do is again this is upside down the base of my bag okay I'm going to have right sides facing I'm just looking at this upside down bit now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down to the base of my bag again making sure I do tend to do things by eye rather than Anything else, what I'm going to do is I am now going to very gently pick up, so I'm not, not stitching it right to the very end, not stitching it right to the very end because this will stitch onto here in a moment, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to use some pins, so I'm going to use my safety pins again. You can use ordinary pins if you want, but I've got these to hand now. So I'm just going to put one in here. Bring it together. I'm going to do one down at this corner. Try and get this one apart. There it is. Pin it together. All I'm doing is holding it in place. Okay. And put another one in the middle. Just to hold it together. So it doesn't slip around and make life a lot easier for me to sew things together. And then I'm literally going to flip the bag over. And I'm going to pin the bottom on the other side exactly the same way. Three pins, one corner, two corners, and in the middle. All the pins are in. And let me show you. Can you see the moss stitch there on the underneath? Moss stitch here on the side. Stocking edge stitches are facing each other on the base. Okay, let me show you the end. So pin in each side. When I pull that around you again, if you want to, you can put another pin in here. Anything to make you feel happy and secure what you're doing. You can put another pin in there. But if you see that, goes like that. When I pull it around, that is going to be attached to that. And the same at the other end. So it looks like it doesn't quite fit. When I pull it, I pull it inside to meet. There you go. Those are actually going to meet across there. So that last bit of bag, which is sort of hanging over the edge of the base like that, will go along the short side of the base. Just be sewn to it like that. Now the ends I've got here on the base, none of them are long enough to do the sewing. I wouldn't want to have a piece of thread long enough to do this. Wool snags, it tangles, it doesn't pull through properly. I would not want to be working with a piece of wool that long. So double this because it's going to cause me problems. I would much rather use a few pieces of wool and uh, keep stopping and starting as I go along. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a piece of wool and hopefully I'll go from one end to the other of the bag with this. So there's the length of the bag, or width of the bag, I should say. Yeah, that's about the width of the bag. 
there's the width of the bag in a piece of wool. I need longer than that to be able to do one side. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do two, two. I think even now I'm, uh, I might have a few problems. Little snag, things like that. But let's, let's go for it. So I've cut here. So remember what I said, do not on this bag use a different type of wool. Keep with this wool. You need it for when you felt the bag in the end. Okay, so here you go. Thread it. Um, it's probably easier to start on a corner just because if you've got a bit of a lump on a corner, it doesn't matter. It's not going to show. So let's find where there's a corner to start with. Here's a corner. I'm going to start on here on the base of the bag and I'm just going to go three times in the same place. Remember I showed you further out that this is something you could do if your, your thread isn't long enough. I'm just going to hold on to that tail because that's the, the one for my piece of thread. One, two, the third time. It's going to really lock it in place. Okay, so got my bit of wet thread attached. That's the bit which is an end. We'll throw that in in a minute. So, just like we did just now, up through the grey. Just going to show you something you can do. Well, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a cheat. It's a bit of a, it's one that will save you a bit of time though in a minute. Right, this end, okay. It's quite a short end. Sewing it in is going to be a bit of a nuisance in a minute. Um, so I can actually tuck it in now while I'm sewing along. So I haven't got a cast off. You think of this length here, there's no cast off. So I'm just going to go through roughly every other stitch. And when you see there's like going to be like one long stitch and one if you feel it, you can feel it, a slightly thicker stitch, a, a looser stitch, a thicker stitch, a looser stitch, a thicker stitch. And I like sewing through the thicker stitches. So up through one of the thicker stitches. But what I'm going to do, if you watch, I'll pull it through carefully. And I can see that loop before I go anywhere else. I'm just going to tuck that end through that loop. Okay, and it's and it pulls it in. If I go up through the grey here, I do exactly the same with my loop coming. Tuck the end through the loop, pull the loop. There's just gonna be one less end to sew in. It's such a tiny little end. So I am moved off camera such a tiny little end you're not going to do so let me feel along here there's my next thick stitch there push my needle through that one so it's right on the edge of the blue Oop. let me show you the loop there's the loop push the end it's going automatically this time through the loop pull it tight and then I'll do, I've only got one little bit left, I'll do it on the next grey. Okay, up through the grey stitch, there it goes. Tuck that through. It's so small, I, can't, I can barely see it now. It doesn't matter, I can cut that end off now, it's no problem. So what you're going to need to do is you've pinned it in place. Don't try on this to match up every stitch to every cast off stitch here. It's going to take you too long and I don't think it'll work. You've just got to feel it. You've got to feel to make sure it feels right. Okay. If you want to put more pins in, just so you, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this one out because I started on this corner. I don't need that one in to hold it in place anymore because I've sewn it in place. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. So here's my next pin. Um, if I'm worried that this 
you know, I might make it too loose in one place and too tight in another. I can just move this pin and I'll put it in here. It will guide me a little bit better. So I've just gone up through the grey. Let's go through the next thick bit of blue. There it is. Up through there. Bit of blue, more or less opposite. It's a stitch here. Just step up through that cast that stitch, cast on stitch. This is, isn't it? Rather than a cast off stitch. Next, take a bit of blue. I can feel it with my fingers. Up through there. The opposite cast on stitch is here. Here we are. Yeah, here it is. This is the next. Blue stitch. Don't pull it too tight. If you pull it too tight, you're going to end up puckering the bottom of the bag and it will look, it'll make your bag feel small and it will also not make it look very beautiful. It's about looks as well as usefulness. And my next thick bit of stitch. See that's more or less opposite that one. Let's go up underneath there. Okay, so I'm working my way along this side of the bag. When I get to this end of the bit of wool, I do one, two, three, and I'll show you how to start the next one so you don't leave a, a gap. I'm at the corner of the bag. I always like to make sure that corners are um, very secure. So what I've done is I've done just like an ordinary stitch, just like we've been doing along the side. But when I go to the corner, I'm actually going to do two stitches in the same place. So I go back through the blue, back through the grey. And then that's just, just a little bit more secure at the corner. Okay, so what I'm doing now, is I've got my two pins. This is the bit that's going to have to go across the the short end of the bottom of the bag. So I'm just going to turn it. I'm just going to pull it. Okay, pull, keep hold of the two corners and then just pull it. Push that down a bit. So it's going in behind. So I can just carry on sewing like I was doing before. So in my blue. the grey. So don't forget I'm on a cast on or a cast off end of the base of my bag so I'll actually have that lip like I had at the top when we're sewing underneath or under. So I'll pull out the, that way I can see the stitch underneath, under. underneath. Am I going to cheat again with this one? Let's go for another cheat one. Right, this is, this was the very first cast on bit on the main body of the bag. Don't need that now. I'm just going to cut that end off. I just have a little bit, five centimetres, six centimetres sticking out. Get rid of that. Next stitch. I'm going to go in blue, up through the blue, it's blue, start pulling it through, there's my loop coming, let's get that little tail line so you can see the loop, push that through the loop and pull it tight. So I'm going to do exactly the same through the grey in a minute, up through the grey, start pulling it through, there's my loop, push the tail end through the loop. Pull it tight. This is going to save me sewing this loom in a minute. I love tricks which save me time. Just make sure this, this corner is where it should be. I can feel where the pin is. Pull that across a little bit. Up from underneath. Start pulling it through. There's the loop. Grey tail end is going through there. Pull it tight. 
all the way to the corner. Push it through the loop. Pull it tight. And one last one, it's going to end, knit it in through the corner. Up, pull it through. Tail end through the loop. Pull it tight. All right. Let's pull that side straight. I've got a tiny bit le the left. I can cut that off. I don't need to worry about that. But remember, I've got to a corner again. So I'm going to do an extra stitch through that corner just to make sure that that is nice and tidy. But what I've also got to is I've got very close to the end of this bit of wool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three stitches here. So I've done one, I've already done two, and this is my third. When I go through it, I'm going to go back through the loop, which will really secure it, and take that off. Let's undo that pin, Let's get rid of that one out of the way. And what I've done, you can actually start to see, look, the corner of the bag formed. I've, knit, I've sewn all the way along that side of the bag, around this corner, on the short edge. I've done half to the base of the bag. So that worked well, didn't it? Having a, a length of cotton, that would, uh, yeah, wool even, a <laughs> length of wool, which was two widths of the bag long. So I should be able to do exactly the same along this side and up the last end of the bag. Okay, and then we'll we'll have finished all of this part. Well done. Well, here we go. There's the bag finished. Um, the bottom is in all the way around. I've um, tidied up all the ends around the bottom. Always worth have an extra look. Is there anything else that needs tidying up, top or bottom? Can't see anything now. Okay, so the magic bit now. Turning it in the right way. Let's see what it looks like. Turn it inside out. Make sure it looks as good in the right way as it looked on the inside. Yes, that's looking nice. It's looking nice all the way around now. Everything tidy. But let's have a little look. If I held this up now, it looks a very lovely bag. I haven't got any big problem with that one at all. The only trouble is, is what you will get with knitting you have a knitted bag like this and you start filling it with a full of shopping and you have it used it over several years that's what we want it to last for we want it to last years after the amount of effort you've put into this it will get saggy it will get bigger and bigger <laughs> it will get saggier and saggier and felting will tighten this up so that you won't get that sag so the next thing is follow the washing instructions on the pattern We've also got the same washing instructions on the inside of the um, the instructions that went around the balls of wool. And sorry, this is a really annoying fly just constantly in this room at the moment. And it it will show you how to t to um, felt it. That means absolutely tighten it up, tighten it so that it will not go saggy. But be really careful about the other garments that you put in with your bag. I'm going to be putting jeans in with this and looking at the colours. Those won't bother jeans at all. You might even make them slightly darker, which would be quite, quite good. But if you've gone for pinks or reds or bright greens, be careful and put in those cat sheets, the ones which catch any loose dye, which is in the washing machine. And... Uh, Yes, it, just make sure you protect your other garments. There's the girl who's been with us all the way through with the odd meow and the odd lick going on. But let's look at them when, they're, when they've been felted and we'll see the difference.
So here's my completed bag. I'm really happy with it. It looks beautiful now that it's been felted. It's shrunk quite a lot, about 50%, I would say. Or, yeah, I'm not very good at percentages, but about 50%. And it's big enough to be a large handbag now. But it is so tough, it's going to last for ages and it's quite a spacious handbag. So as well as the things I normally carry around with me, purse and cards and sunglasses and things like that, there'll be lots of space in there for bits and pieces as well that I'm going to put in. So here it is, if I pick it up, you can see how big it is in comparison with my hand. It's a lovely bag and you should feel really proud that you've completed yours and that you've got a lovely bag to take around with you as well. Well done, you've done an excellent job on learning all of those skills. You can practice them on other things and you've got wool left over. I know you have, I've got plenty of this wool left over. If I wanted to, I could make a small purse with it, felt it first, so sew it together, felt it first, and then when you felted it, you'll know what size zip to put in. So it was you've got plenty left. Don't use this love waste this lovely wool that you've got left. Okay. Well done. I'll see you again soon. Before we go any further, I want to look at some problems that might arise when you're actually knitting. Before we start looking at problems, I want to look at the best way of avoiding them. Because the best way of avoiding having to pick up loads of stitches that you've dropped is to avoid dropping those stitches. So when you want to put your knitting down, the best thing to do is make sure that the stitches are pushed well onto the needle. They're not loitering right by the end. They're pushed on. Put your two needles together and stick the ball of wool on the top like that. Then they won't fall off. OK, so that's the best way of doing it. The other thing to do is is just to keep counting. If you um, this is a really easy pattern to start on. You've only got ten stitches, so if you make keep making sure that you've still got those ten stitches on, um, it's also really good mindfulness to keep counting. So if you keep counting your stitches just to make sure that they're all still there, that you haven't dropped one, um, each row you can count your ten then you, you'll be satisfied that you know you haven't dropped a stitch. The other thing to do is just to keep aware of your tension. So when you are holding that wool in your hand, I can find my wool, first of all, it seems to have hidden itself in behind my knitting, there it is. So when you are holding it between your needle and your forefinger, just it's just a gentle hold, it's just keeping it there so you know you've got it for when you need it. It's not really tight. Um, it's not big loops, it's you're just keeping it under control so you know you've got it there when you need it. And it's, you know, knitting's supposed to be relaxing, it's not supposed to be a stressful thing. So make sure if your hands are feeling really tight and, um, you know, you're grabbing hold of your needles and they're starting to get squeaky because it shows that you, you're getting sweaty hands, you know. Go away, relax, give your hands a shake, give your fingers a wiggle. Make sure that you are relaxed when you're doing this. You don't, this doesn't need to be a stressful thing. It is a really mindful thing, knitting. So don't, don't get worried about it. Put some music on in the background and, and relax when you're doing it, okay? So if you do make mistakes, and we all do, I've made some real clangers in my life. So, first of all, this is not a really tricky piece of knitting. If you've got to um, just pull your needle out and go right back to the beginning. But there you go, I've pulled my needle out. And I can go right back to the beginning. I can just pull the, my thread, my piece of wool, and pull it right back. And so get rid of the whole piece of knitting that I've done. It's no big deal. Right? If your needle does fall out, there you go, mine's out. So if it falls out, what you've got to do is to try and insert it back into those stitches before any of them unravel. So the first things first is start with the first stitch and then just very gently thread your needle through and thread it through, thread it through. 
Now the chances are what will happen virtually always is the last stitch will come undone. And I'm going to pull mine undone. And there you go. I've got a stitch and it's come undone. I can tell that it's come undone because the thread isn't coming out of this stitch now. It's coming out of the stitch before it, which is on my needle. The easy thing to do is take the other needle, put it through the stitch, and literally, oh, let's put, there you go. See, I'm falling, it's failing as well. I put it through the stitch, and I literally just knit it again. I put it through, around the back, down and up. There you go. So I've done it again. Okay. Okay. So what if the worst happens and you've dropped a stitch? Okay, so I'm counting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've only got nine stitches on there. I know I should have ten. And I can see here, if you see here, this is the stitch that I've dropped. I've missed it. Now, because I've been counting each row, I know I've only missed it on this row. So I've only dropped it this row ago. So the easiest thing to do, well, there are two ways of tackling this, but I would suggest at this time when you've only dropped one stitch, the easiest thing to do is to take out this other stitches and go back to that stitch. But if you can see there it is, it's there. So if I take out the row of knitting from this stitch back to this stitch, uh, I've undone that row of knitting. I've got the one, two, three, four, five stitches, which are correct on there. And I've got one, two, three, four, five stitches here, which are no longer on a needle. So what I do, and they haven't been knitted in this row because look, there's my thread here. So I'm going to put those back on the other needle because those need to be knitted in a moment. So one, two, three, four. And what always happens is the last stitch, look, oh, it's a nuisance, isn't it? It's pulled out. It's pulled out. Even the row before is pulled out. Now, stitches are just loops. They're loops which have had thread pulled through to make a new loop. Now, the way to do this is you put your needle through that loop. Now, it's got a piece a thread missing from it there it's there behind it you can see it look that piece of thread which is going across that piece of yarn which is going across the back should be the next loop which should be on here but I'm catching this before it pulls out again before it goes even further back if I pull that that stitches on there and I need to pull this thread through this yarn through that loop to make the loop which is missing so if I put my needle underneath there's my needle underneath that stitch underneath that yarn that was running behind it. Now I need to make a new loop with this piece of yarn. Now the easiest way to do it is use this needle and just pull it over the top of that yarn. And then you've made your loop again. So I'm going to show you again. Right. There's a big loose piece of, of yarn. Big loose piece of yarn which should be the, the loop which makes this stitch. This is a stitch from the row before. Okay, so if I put that over the end of my needle and I use the needle that I knit with to pull that one, that stitch, over the top of that piece of yarn and I've got my stitch back again. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I just need to knit these to get to the end. One, two, three, four, five, end of my row. Check all the stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All there. Brilliant. Just thought I'd show you what to have to do if worse things should happen and your stitches should not just come undone but pull back through. So if you can see I've still got a stitch here but I've got one, two threads up above it. So that means I've lost two rows of stitching there. 
so it's not as bad as it would appear so don't worry so first of all just to stop it go back anywhere further i'm just going to put that stitch on the needle it doesn't make any difference which one just putting it on the needle and then what i've got to do is work out is which is the lowest piece of thread lowest piece of yarn and it'd be the one closest to the stitch so that's the one i need to put on first in order to not to make a muddle of this knitting so what i do is i've got the stitch on this needle i put the lowest piece of yarn over the top of the needle and then either with the other needle or with your fingers you literally pick up the stitch pass it over that yarn and pull it off and then what i've got is i've got that stitch back on again and so I, i'll show you the next one so exactly the same so there's only one piece of yarn left loose now look you can see it goes from one side of the knitting over to the other but not through this stitch so in order to put that stitch back in, put the yarn over the top of the needle, literally pick up the stitch, pull it over the top of that piece of yarn, pull it on. So I've got the stitches picked up again. Now, if I look at the yarn, this stitch isn't on the right needle. It hasn't been knitted in this, in this round. So I'm going to put it back on the other needle and then it's ready to be knitted. So I carry on and knit. I've just got to the end of this row then. Right, and you can't even see where that's been. That's what's useful about picking them up with the, the needles that you're using because they make the stitches the right size. Quite a lot of people say I'll pick it up with a, a crochet hook. But if the crochet hook is not the same size as the needles that you're using to knit with you'll end up with smaller or larger stitches that's why it's i always find it easier to do it the way i've shown you